welcome to my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. My name is Stephanie, and today I have a slightly different kind of episode to share with you today because I have been doing a ton of sewing. And I know that a lot of people here do both, knitting, sewing, crocheting. We are multi-craftual, multi-craftsy, multi-crafty people. And there are also a lot of people that don't sew or aren't interested in sewing. And because I've done quite a bit of it, I figured I would just put it in an entire separate episode. They are all based off of the same pattern, which makes this kind of a featured finished projects video with different variations of the same pattern. So the pattern that I'm talking about is the Orchard Top and Dress by Helen's Closet. And the pattern does come in four different views and I have done all four of them in many different ways. And each item is slightly different from the other. If you are new here, you may not know yet that I often will make a pattern more than once. It is something I do enjoy doing as long as I enjoyed it the first go around. I will not make something more than once if I didn't enjoy it. In fact, I will likely not finish a project if I don't enjoy the process of it at the time either because life is short and time is precious and if I'm not loving it, I'm just going to move on to something else. That being said, if I do love it, I will try making it again and again and again, trying out different things. Maybe I'm adjusting something here and there, changing up the color, changing up the fabric, whatever the case may be. I just enjoy the creative exploration of it. And oftentimes I am driven by the end result, but I do still have to enjoy the process of it. So today I have several variations of the orchard top and dress to share with you. This is a free pattern from Helen's Closet and it comes in a wide range of sizes. I'm going to pull up the information here and hopefully I will not miss anything. And I will link to the website in the description box below this video. And I guess now is a good time to also say that I include closed captioning in all of my videos. You can click on that CC button. If I speak too fast or too slow for your preferences, YouTube allows you to adjust the speed. And if that ends up making my voice sound different, <laughs> then you can follow along with the captions and then they will, you know, progress at the speed at which you change it to. So this pattern is available through a, I think you sign up for their newsletter and then it gets sent to you and then you download the pattern. The pattern does come in the pages where you print out on a computer and then you tape all the pieces together. This one also includes the A0 print copy shop format where you can send it off to get it printed on this huge piece of paper and then you don't have to piece anything together, which is lovely. I cannot tell you how many times I have cried, maybe not cried, but well, maybe cried, <laughs> over piecing patterns together and then you get one millimeter off, which may not seem that big at the time, but several pages later, it becomes much more than one millimeter and things do not line up and it is very annoying to cut out a pattern from pieces that don't line up. And so this way it's accurate, it's all laid out for you and then you can take your tracing paper on top of it, trace out the size that you need, cut it out from the tracing paper and leave your pattern just pristine as it was when it was printed and use it over and over again. So that is what I did with this pattern. I sent it off to my local sewing shop which has a printer and then I pick it up. And at this local sewing shop, it's $3 per page, which is just absolutely lovely and delightful. And then because it is also a fabric store, you can also pick up the fabric that you need for the project. And it is just a wonderful experience overall. So the orchard top and dress is designed to be like a spaghetti strap garment. The sizes are included from United States sizing of 0 to 34 and that is up to a 60 inch chest and a 62 inch hip I believe. It is A-line so kind of swingy. You can change up the fabric and it has, it doesn't have bust starts but I believe there are instructions sending you to somewhere to figure out how to do the bust starts if that's something you wanted. It has inseam pockets for the dress versions and the top is like a cropped uh, standard or full length and then you've got a shorter dress which I think hits right above the knee and then a longer one which is a more like mid-calf and so these are based on someone who is 
five foot six inches so if you are taller or shorter than that or prefer your garment a different length there are instructions in the pattern that tell you how to grade it to the length that you want I think that is so nice this pattern is considered advanced beginner and it does hold your hand throughout so that you are not overwhelmed with things that you have to like fill in the holes for it just tells you what you need to do I love that. I have been sewing for decades, ever since I was little, and my mom sews. My mom's mom was a sewing instructor, and my mother-in-law sews. I am just surrounded by lots of creativity and have lots of support in case I ever run into any trouble. If you do not have that kind of support system in place, a lot of times the local sewing shops have classes. There are a lot of classes online as well that you can look into. So the pattern recommends that you can use like a drapey lightweight fabric if you want a more flowy tank or sundress type of style or a light cotton or linen if you want a little more structure and some volume. So it does make a difference on how it lays on your body. And I did try a couple different options in what I have. They also recommended like a rayon viscose um, type of fabric too. And I did try one on 100% rayon and that one came out so drapey and it's just lovely, but it was not the most fun to sew with because it's so slippery, but I will get to that when I get to that one. There are also instructions on how to modify the straps. So you could have it just fixed, which is how the pattern is written, but it also gives you instructions on how to do adjustable straps. So you would buy that hardware where you could adjust the length of the straps. I thought that was pretty cool. It also gives you measurements if you want to do ties. So if you wanted to tie like bows on the top of your shoulders for the strap length, that way you can adjust it also. And I thought that was really nice to have as well. I did not try any of those other options. So all of my straps are fixed. However, I did adjust the strap length after the first one that I made when I realized the strap length was too long for my preferences. Okay, so I think I am done with that overview. I'm going to share with you the ones that I have made. I'm going to start with the first one here. So this one, oh, isn't it so cute? It is a strawberry fabric print in a lightweight woven cotton. And this one I followed to the T in the pattern. So I, based on my measurements, I did the size four and it does have some ease to it. Again, it's very swingy and A-line, so it goes nicely as a longer top. I don't have to make any adjustments there. And I did find the straps about two inches too long. So this one is going to be a pajama shirt, and I think I might have enough fabric to do pajama shorts to go with it. So we'll see how that goes. But I really do like how it fits, and it was my first time making bias tape from the fabric. So you have to cut the fabric on the bias, so 45 degrees from the grain line, and that way it is stretchy and can go around curves real nice. And yeah, I had a fun time making that. I will tell you that the store owner of the local fabric shop I went to, um, they introduced me to this bias tape maker and this little tool is so clever. So basically you cut out your strips of fabric for your bias tape and then you slide it through here and the edges of the fabric go up on the corner and basically as you pull it through the other end, it folds it for you. So this double fold bias tape has the edges folded and then you fold again. So if you start out, let's say, we'll just make an even number of two inches, which is not what the pattern is, I think it's one and a half, but for easy math, we'll just say two inches. So at the end of it all, you will end up with a half inch wide strap because you divide it in four from folding it twice. This one is slightly smaller than that. And so basically as I pull along, I put the iron on the other side and iron it as I'm pulling it out so it makes those nice creases and then it's done. If you're doing it by hand, it's fine too, but you just have to make sure you're even as you are folding it across and ironing. So it almost feels like you don't have enough hands when you do it that way, but with this, it's so easy to pull along and it's folding it as you are ironing it. So that was really nice. The front and backs of this are identical. So you don't really have to have a front or back, but I did press my seams towards the back as it recommended. So it is slightly different on the inside. And I do have a serger, so all of my edges, that all the raw edges at least that are exposed uh, have the overlocking so that there is no fraying. And then the raw edges along the neckline and armholes are all encased in the bias tape so there are no raw edges anywhere and then the bottom hem you have the raw edge encased in the hem as well so that was my first one so of course once i make one i have to make another one so this one is also a 100 percent cotton light light woven cotton 
one and I did shorten the straps by two inches on this one and I just when I was cutting it out I cut the back slightly higher than the front just to see how it would be and I don't notice a huge difference when I'm wearing it probably because I only cut like maybe three quarters of an inch higher in the back but I do like it and this one what I changed is I cut it on the selvage edge on the back so there is a seam down the back instead of it being all continuous and I think that actually works really well if you are trying to save on fabric or the amount that you are using and again it just depends on the size you're cutting of course and if your fabric is a narrower width or a wider width to be able to get more fabric out no, not more fabric out, to get more out of your fabric. And also it would depend on the length, of course, that you are making. And then also if it's directional fabric. So sometimes you may or may not be able to flip your pattern upside down, be able to cut the other side, which you can do if it's like a solid color linen, for example. But uh, since these birds are flying in a certain way, I can't flip one over, otherwise the birds will be upside down. But I was able to cut on the salvage edge, which was kind of neat. So now I've got this back uh, line or seam here and I think that actually looks really nice. So I like that differentiation on this one and it's super comfortable and lightweight and I did the strap with the same on this one. So on the next one I used repurposed fabric or I repurposed fabric. This is 100% linen. It is from a dress that I accidentally shrunk so that the armholes were too short. It was a maxi length dress so there was a lot of fabric and I love this plaid so I wanted to reuse it. And so on this one I did shorten the straps by two inches, but I also lengthened the body by two inches, so I didn't end up with it a lot shorter, which the other one did end up shorter, so it's kind of between the cropped and the longer length top. But this one, I lengthened the body as well, so it ends up being closer to what the view B length is supposed to be. And the gingham straps are from an old work shirt of my husband's where the cuff had worn out, and so I was able to cut some bias tape from that and I really like how this one turned out as well. I feel like my stitching, all of my top stitching is very nice and tidy and I did the front and the back um, the same height this time but I love how this one drapes and flows. I feel like the linen is super nice. It's breathable and it doesn't have that structure that the crisp cotton has a little bit more of where it might Balloon out isn't quite the word I'm looking for because that doesn't sound very flattering, but this one just drapes and hangs a lot nicer than the crisp cotton. Okay, this next one here is back to the woven cotton. And this one, what I changed up were the straps. So this one I went for slightly wider straps, just a little bit. And I like how they turned out. So I cut out two inch strips instead of one and a half inch strips. So I ended up with half inch wide straps and I like how they are able to cover my bra straps better and the rest of it is the same. I don't remember, let's see, did I? I don't really remember, but I really like how this print turned out. I think it looks super fun and summery and it looks great with jeans. If I have a picture or remember to put up a picture of me wearing it, I will put it here on the screen. Okay, the next one I am wearing right now, just so I have one to show you. This fabric is Ruby Star Fabric that I purchased from a local yarn and fabric store, and I love this print. I'm going to move around this bench here so I can show you a more full length view of it. I'm wearing jeans with it that go up to my belly button. This is the cropped length. I have a jean jacket on. I'm gonna take the jean jacket off just so you can see what the straps look like. I think I just did the regular, nope, well, I don't remember. I might have done, yeah, I did the thinner straps on this one. And this is the cropped length. And this is a woven 100% cotton, so you can see that it has a little more structure. So it's not so much that it balloons out maybe, but it definitely has more structure to it and doesn't cling to the body in any way like a rayon might. And I had, <laughs> I had to make sure I cut out the print okay on this one. So I had one yard of fabric and I wanted to make sure that the front and the back, though they were different, that they weren't like just off enough that it would look like 
I messed up or like didn't put it in the right spot. I didn't want my eyes to be tricked. So I like how in the back the sun is along the bottom. And in the front I have the flowers on top and then the tree coming out the side here. I didn't want like a tree growing up the middle, so I just needed to be careful with how I was cutting this fabric out, but I really like how it turned out. The next one I'm going to share with you, I did change up the length. So this one is 100% rayon fabric and it is very flowy. It is Definitely an explosion of color from a garden. There's foxglove in there, zinnias, and it is very bright and very fun and super drapey. So this one I was not going to attempt making bias tape from because I had cut it to be longer and then because it kept shifting, I had to keep cutting it shorter. So by the time I was done, I had all these other random pieces that I was not going to piece together to make bias tape. So this is actually like pre-made polyester bias tape that I had. And I think at that point I was like, I just, I just need to be done with this one. But I have to say, I really like the end result. This is probably more tunic length. Let's see. Not sure it's going to show the length here, but this one definitely hangs a little more like drapier and does not like have the structure that the cotton does where it kind of poofs out a little bit. But I do love how drapey it is. I think this is going to be really great also over jeans, but also with like leggings and a, the jean jacket I think would still work or a cardigan. And I like, I like how this one feels. So even though I struggled a little, I think I would try making another one with rayon, but I do like how it turned out. And I think it is very fun and beautiful and it'll be a delight to wear. So again, straps are shortened on this one and the length is somewhere between view D and view C by the time I was cutting the pieces out and sewing it together. I have two more to share with you. Here we go, this one is linen, and you know what? Maybe I will put it on to show you because it's, it's kind of hard to show you this without wearing it, so one second. Okay, here we are. This one is 100% linen. The strawberry fabric you may recognize from the first one that I shared with you. So I made bias tape from that. And I did this one at the half inch finished width. And this length I think is the view C, which hits above the knee. And I did the inseam pockets on this. I did use the strawberry fabric for the pockets. I did follow the instructions for under stitching which keeps the pockets from flipping out. And they are pretty much invisible when it's in there. I don't feel like the inner fabric sticks out at all, which is nice, especially since I used a contrasting fabric. I feel like this is very breezy because of the A-line shape, it's nice and swingy, and I can still wear it with a jean jacket or a cardigan. If I want to, I feel like that looks really nice. And in the spring and summer, when you're coming in and out of places that might have air conditioning, or the day just ends up being warm and cool, up and down all the time, I feel like this is a great piece that can be layered. And I'm not sure the length is showing very well, but I can't back up any more or stand on my tippy toes any higher, but it does hit right above the knee and I am 5'5 for reference. And this one I did adjust the straps again by two inches and the pattern is written for a 5'6 tall person and being 5'5 five five and adjusting the straps, I feel like it works out just fine. I forgot to mention on this last one that I also cut it on the selvage edge. I feel like it saves on fabric because I'm not cutting off that selvage edge and then I also don't have to serge those sides and that is the back. I feel like also that seam gives it a little bit of stability in the back, just having stitching there. And I like having a differentiation between the front and back, especially when the cut pieces are the same. 
Okay, we are down to the last one. And I suppose some people, if they do like a spring or summer capsule wardrobe, which I do not, this could basically be it because there are eight pieces. So one for every day of the week plus a bonus one. And yeah, I think that's kind of exciting. So this last one, this is a sage green and white gingham shirting material cotton. 100% cotton, very lightweight, drapey, and I really like how it feels. It was very easy to sew with. It has that crispness of some of the other cottons that I use, but I feel like it's a little more drapey than those. And I made the full length version. This is view D. Maybe if I stand up here. Nope, still can't see the end of it. So it goes to mid calf length and it has the nice swing to it, still the A-line. I did the pockets on this one. I will say that the pockets, I feel like need to start higher for me. This one, I might have done at the pattern height, I can't remember, but I think if it starts even an inch and a half higher, it would probably be more suitable, but it's fine. It isn't like I'm bending over to put my hand in my pocket, it's not that deep, but I feel like it could just start slightly higher. For this one, I did do the half inch width for the straps. And the front and back are the same. I bought two yards of fabric for this one. It came in the apparel fabric section. And so it starts at 50, I think 56 inches. I wanna say it's something like that. Apparel fabric tends to be wider. And other fabric can be like 44 or 46 inches, I believe. And so I do have a little bit remaining. I did use the same fabric for the pockets, for the binding, or the bias tape, and I still have a tiny bit left over, and so I didn't have any issues with running out of fabric, and that was two yards of fabric for the size four, view D. Since this fabric is the same on the front and the back, and there isn't a direction, like an up or down, you can cut by flipping your pattern upside down so it doesn't have to be like this way and this way. It can be like this way and this way to cut, and that saves you some fabric as well. And then if you have room to cut on the selvage edge, that also saves some fabric. I don't think, nope, this one doesn't have a seam in the back, so I didn't have to cut on the selvage edge on this one, and it turned out just fine. I feel like this is such a comfortable summer dress. It's airy and breezy and lightweight, but not see-through, so I don't need like a slip or some other lining underneath, and it is wide enough on the bottom, so I'm walking fast. I'm not like feeling restricted or anything, and yeah, it's just, it's so comfortable. Okay, I think that is everything that I wanted to share with you about this orchard top and dress. I had so much fun making this, I guess you could say, collection together. I would love to make more of them and just try out different things. I might give that rayon another attempt. I might see if there's like a linen rayon blend that I can give a try. I wanna try some more graphic prints that could be more like block printed. I think those could be really fun. Maybe some of them I could add like a ruffle along the bottom. So many options to give it a little, a little bit of a change from one to the other. So maybe this inspires you to give it a try yourself. And again, if you don't sew but want to learn, there are so many tutorials out there. And if you have a local sewing shop near you, oftentimes they have classes that you can take and just help you get started and answer all of your questions. And so with that, Cheers to being creative, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.